Well, hello, fellow hams and YouTubers. Or is it YouTubers and fellow hams? Well, there's been plenty of unboxing videos of this little uh, kit, partially assembled kit, so I won't go uh, too deep into that. But uh, what we have here is a UBITX HF 3 to 30 megahertz transceiver. 10 watt output, mostly uh, pre-assembled from India. Again, I'm just rehashing what you all already know. There's plenty of videos on this thing out there. Um, plenty. Let me turn on my over the bench cam here. All right. There we go. Now oh, we got two views. <laughs> We'll see how this goes in editing. So yeah, box of extra parts here, connectors, jacks, switches, and coder. Um, a two pin plug and jack, I guess is for the microphone. And inside of there, there it is right there, is a little electric microphone element. That's all they give you for the microphone for a single sideband transmission. So I was sitting here thinking about it, and I got an idea for that. I'm going to pull that out here, because I'm going to have to measure this guy. Yep, I'm going to have to measure this guy. We'll get to that in a second. Main board. Well taped and wrapped in bubble wrap. So there is the main board. Show that to both cameras. We'll see which one gives us a better view. Hmm. The inductors are uh, all kind of bent over a little bit. Looks like it was probably handled a little rough. And those are definitely hand wound, I think. Yeah, I don't know, they're pretty even. Maybe they got a machine doing them now. We'll see. Anyway, um, neat little board, nicely done. And then this is the display board, which plugs onto the front of the other board. And I'm getting it out today not to assemble it, but to measure it because it needs an enclosure. And I happen to have an enclosure that uh, was sent to me by Rick out in California quite a while back in a, oh, I think it was the What's in the Box episode number three, perhaps. Look at this, all wrapped up in tissue. Nice extruded aluminum, black painted, powder coated. Yeah, this will be a nice enclosure for it. So I needed to measure it and make sure the board would fit and uh, this almost looks like it's made for it. Look at that. That is going to fit just perfectly in there. Absolutely perfectly. So that's going to be the uh, enclosure I'm going to use. Now the enclosure has with it metal front and back panels. Right? Pre-drilled. Um, I'm only going to use one of them uh, for the back, where I'm going to, and I, I don't know, I might not use the metal panels on the back either. i got to think about this, because what I want to do is I want to custom 3D print uh, panels for the enclosure so I can have the display and then the uh, controls without having to try to work uh, metal. I don't have a clean way of cutting metal um, for these. So back panel is going to have, what, power and an antenna jack. Um, probably an audio jack too. I don't know if I can fit in the speaker in this enclosure or not. Maybe I can. But uh, the other thing I'm going to do for this little microphone element here is I am I'm going to make a hand mic. Uh, I've got some cable for it, and I'm going to design and 3D print um, a hand mic. So that will be uh, the big uh, 3D printing part of this project. 
which is what I'm going to tackle first. I'm going to get that hand mic built. And then once I get the hand mic built, we'll uh, get the radio mounted in the case and the controls mounted on the front and back panels, which I'll probably 3D print. And then we'll try it out and we'll see how this little radio operates. And then maybe in the future we'll look at modding it. So that's where I'm at today. Today I'm just going to make some measurements on this little electric element and then go up to the computer and probably spend some time this afternoon designing a hand mic. And I'm going to try to do it in FreeCAD. So this is the first part of this project. Let's go up to the computer and start doing some design work. While I'm here in my favorite program, Tinkercad, really love this program. I'm, I'm a visual designer, so for me, uh, this is just the way to go. Um, my chair is shrinking. You would figure after all the years that they've had of engineering and materials design, they could design a hydraulic cylinder for an adjustable height chair that could actually hold its position. Why, why, why can't they do that? I mean, why not? I mean, come on. Some kind of mechanical lock maybe that grabs the uh, shaft when you release the lever? You know, anyway. Uh, so I knocked up this design for the microphone. Let me uh, show it to you. Here we are. And uh, we've got in here a pocket that holds a micro switch. A pocket for the little electric condenser mic or electric uh, amp microphone that's uh, included with the uh, kit. You can see two little holes here that go through to the front to let audio in. Uh, strain relief down here for the microphone cable. Pocket over here that uh, this pin sits in for the push to talk lever. And this paddle at the top of the push to talk lever here comes up here and blocks against the case. And this uh, all fits just perfectly. I've, I've uh, test fit everything. Micro switch in here and you can push to push the talk. I've got one change I need to make though. And we're gonna do that real quick here. Um, the back has these protrusions that sit at the back of the microphone and the micro switch to hold them in place. Um, the microphone, I'm going to put a little piece of foam in its pocket so that this will press it into the foam and that will keep it from moving around so you won't hear the rattling, you know, if the microphone's moving around you won't hear that, it won't happen. And that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, the uh, front side has a grill. Look at that. You can see the two holes there coming in for the mic, but I made a grill on it too. And these edges are beveled on the front and the back to uh, make it a little more comfortable in the hand. So I'm quite pleased with this. Um, it came out pretty good. I printed uh, the parts all on the uh, Anycubic i3 Mega that's back there, the new uh, 3D printer. I'm going to do a video on that. Um, just like all the Chinese printers, I had to do some modifications and re <laughs> not repairs, but fix some design flaws in it um, to get it to where I'm happy with it. But as I said, I need to make a quick change in here anyway. So as long as I'm here, I'm gonna make my change. This button needs to stick out about three more millimeters. It doesn't quite come out of the microphone far enough to be comfortable, so I'll just grab it. And it's five, so we'll make it six, seven, eight. There we go. That's what I like about Tinkercad, man. Revising stuff, so easy. It's all visual. Boom. There, I've revised that part. Now I'll just export it and reprint it. I've been playing around a little in FreeCAD, and uh, you could do the same in FreeCAD, but it wouldn't be as quick for me. Um, for me, with this being so visual, I can just point to what I want and do it and work on it. In FreeCAD, I'd have to go down through the part tree and uh, find the right sketch that creates that shape and pad and modify its parameters numerically. Whereas here it was just click and drag and I'm done. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, if they took this concept of uh, Tinkercad and extended it, you know, and let you do things like select an edge and click chamfer or fill it, um, that would be so nice. That would just be so nice, but it's you know it's it's amazing. This is a fairly complicated 
piece, you know, and it took me uh, a couple hours to originally initially knock knock it up, and then it took uh, oh I think I printed two test pieces to measure things and and see how they worked in the real world and make small revisions. Uh, and some things, you know, like this push to talk button. It wasn't until I fitted it in the mic that I could tell I needed to extend this another three millimeters to make it comfortable. You know that. You, you have to prototype. You have to print a prototype and, and evaluate it and uh, make your changes. So that is the part in Tinkercad. Um, I'll show you a quick time lapse of the 3D printer spitting out the, uh, the front. Uh, and then we'll go down to the bench and we'll put it all together and show you the finished product. Okay, we have our finished microphone. Now this turned out uh, pretty good. Um, beveled the edges uh, here slightly so it's a little more comfortable in the hand. Inside, go to the overhead view. I have a pocket here for a micro switch. Now the micro switch that I have is uh, fairly standard size, the larger size switches. And I have one that's got the, whole, the uh, switch right in the center. Uh, some of them have that offset a little bit off to the side. I uh, <clears throat> I um, designed this shell for this switch with the center, oops, with the center button. If you have a switch that has the offset button, this part of the shell is only one millimeter thick, so you could very easily just take a pair of nippers and just nip out part of that shell for your switch. So that's that. It fits in there. It moves around just a touch, but it's not bad. Uh, the microphone element that came with the uh, Microbitics sits right in this circular pocket. And there are two little tiny oval-shaped holes coming through in this grain right here for the mic. Um, I put a little tiny piece of foam in there. I just took some packing foam and trimmed out a little tiny circle of foam so the microphone would be pressed against that foam by this standoff in the back uh, and that'll keep the mic from rattling around. The push to talk switch, uh, I printed this one in a different color just so it would uh, look more interesting. But there is a pocket right here for this pin to fit in and then the paddle up here to keep it in there and uh, it as you can see goes just fine and this is this pocket is tilted slightly this way so that when the switch is depressed it lines up perfectly flat along the edge of it. So if you have to trim that side for your micro switch, um, it should uh, do just fine. Uh, down here I've got a block for strain relief. The microphone cable I'm using has a clamp in it, but you could make a clamp if you have a different cable. And I've got a spring strain relief and a little notch right here for it, so this will sit in there like that and uh, notch in the strain relief. Now these holes are three millimeter, and that is just perfect for a six thirty seconds screw thread to bite into. So the kind of screws that you'd use to mount a hard drive will hold things in. So I'm going to put this together. I don't. I'm not going to wire it up yet because I don't know the wiring uh, for the uh, microbitics. I've got to go find documentation for the kit. Uh, it doesn't come even with a link to where the documentation is, but I'm sure that there's documentation out there that I can find. Uh, so I'm not going to wire it up, I'm just going to assemble it um, to see how it looks and uh, feels and behaves when it's assembled. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put the strain relief in for the mic. And there we have it. 
This old uh, mic cable has a five pin connector on it. I'm going to replace that with a standard four pin mic connector and jack. But nice satisfying click. Comfortable in the hand. I think this will work out fine for my uh, Microbitix kit. Obviously, you could uh, simply uh, repurpose an old microphone, make your own for it. I just wanted to do something different and 3D print my own microphone, and uh, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that'll work just fine. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? There you go. 3D printed microphone. All right. So next up for the kit is going to be the enclosure. Uh, I've got that nice extruded aluminum enclosure. I'm going to see if everything fits. Get all the jacks and things together and make a front and rear panel for it. Um, but that'll be the next video. And uh, the third video will have the whole thing wired up and we'll do some on the air testing with it and uh, review the uh, performance of it. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.